G'day guys, part two of the Q&A starting now. Um, if you missed part one, I posted it last week, just go back and have a look. Um, part two is just a roll on the rest of the questions, another 20 odd minutes. Um, you know, all things camping, caravanning, all the rest of it. But you will see a little snippet this episode of the, um, the 3D design of the canopy build, so that's pretty cool. Let me know what you think about it, I'm really excited. If you're wondering what the little bits are on top when you see it, um, they're there to hold the tinny, which I'll, which I'll be able to tell you more about later as well. Anyway, let's get into this episode. Cheers. Um, Sarah asks, do you find the dual cab ute? How do you find it and traveling with kids? So it is a little in inside the cab. It is quite small, much more, you know, much smaller than a 200 series or a patrol. Yeah. For kids. I mean, it's not too bad for Chloe cause she's in the the, the baby seat and her legs are up quite high and yeah. she's not tall. But honestly, between the back seat and our seats, there's this much room. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm six foot three, yeah. Tiff's quite tall as well. So she's in the middle at the moment, which is good because it doesn't affect either of our seats. But when we have another child and we have to move her over, she'll have to sit... Behind probably you. Probably behind you because the baby seat has to be reverse facing oh, yeah. and it's big. So she'd have to be behind you, but you have your seat back quite... Yeah. Far, so that's going to be a struggle, I think. And but that's, we'll that's, figure it out. Yeah, that's why, like, yeah, probably for the next trip, the big lap in twenty twenty five will be in the D Max. But I think after that, we're going to have to get a new car, and it's mainly going to be for that reason for having kids in the back. There's just not enough room. And the dog as well. I'm not sure where the dog's going to go. And we don't know how big <laughs> he's going to be yet. Uh, Morn asked, "How do you find the Isuzu? How does the Isuzu perform during a road trip? Any major issues with the vehicle?" Nah, it's so good. Hey, we were we were sitting on a you know, we've done quite a lot of modifications and stuff to it, to the engine and, and to everything else. But yeah, we were at gross combined mass, 5.9 tonne. So we we're amongst the heaviest rigs on the road. Uh, and we were sitting on 100k an hour everywhere, uphills yeah. the whole lot, getting 17 litres per 100. So good fuel economy, relatively comfortable, except for road noise and stuff, which we're yeah. working on at the moment for that rebuild series. But your um, D-Max isn't standard. You've got the... No, nah, lots of mods. The chips and whatever they yeah, are. Yeah, GVM upgrades and um, chipped and tuned and lots of stuff. But yes, no, the car was great. It was very reliable. Um, yeah. Matt asked, how do you go back to living a normal life after your trip? For me, it was quite easy. I just slot right back in. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Daniel asked, have Emu Export given you a sponsorship yet? No, what's with that? Haven't heard a word from them. No. <laughs> uh, Des asked, does your canopy get hot inside and how do you vent it? No, mine doesn't. I know a lot of people do have issues with that. I think what's, what's going on with mine is it's, um, it's raw aluminium, so it reflects a lot of heat. Also, if you look at the top of my car, um, at the top of the canopy, sorry, it's completely covered in solar panels and they're on little um, mounts, so there's an air gap underneath. So it's sort of like having a tropical cover over the top of the canopy. So no, it didn't get particularly hot, even though there's no insulation inside it. And no, there's no vents, although there's holes everywhere in it and cracks. Daryl asked, when is the new canopy coming? Uh, soon, where it's designed, it's looking awesome. Um, but yeah, soon. Next couple of weeks, we're joining metal together. The design process took a while because we wanted he wanted to get it absolutely 100% the first time because he wants it repeatable. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be something that um, is on the shelf that anyone else can buy. So, yeah. And then Nathan asked what you've done about your broken canopy. So it's still on your car at the moment. Yeah. It's still together. I'm either just going to sell it for bugger all. I've already got a bloke lined up that'll buy it, knowing that it's in terrible condition. Or I'm I was sort of half thinking that I might bolt it to a to a trailer, a trailer um, and have a big slide out. Uh, barbecue and some beer taps out one side and some big speakers and yeah make a bit of a sort of yeah, party trailer I don't know 4x4AU asked what are the plans with the canopy and your setup so that'll be coming up in your yeah in your build video yeah check him out on Instagram and um, YouTube guys stay tuned Andy asked what needs to be upgraded changed etc with the with the canopy I think Oh, just lots of things. Uh, well, I mean, I'm getting a whole new canopy, but the differences between them, I, I'll go through them in great detail in those videos. But yeah, basically just structurally, it needs to be sound. 
Nicole asked, uh, in the new canopy, will you run another draw fridge or an upright? An upright fridge. I've yep. already I've bought a, bought a already Bushman's bought 85 litre upright. So, And I'll discuss the reasons why, but basically, um, basically it's a hell of a lot lighter. Travelling Winfields asked, did you buy hiking shoes for Chloe? No, we didn't buy hiking shoes. She had thongs, sandals, or her runners. Yeah, or barefoot most of the time anyway. Yeah. And then we had the same. We don't. We didn't have hiking shoes. We've no. never never bought hiking shoes. We bought just thongs and um, and a pair of runners. But I wish I'd brought some reef shoes because there's yeah. a lot of yeah. If you want to be walking through the shallows and the mud flats, there's a lot of yeah stonefish and stuff. Problem with kids is they grow out of their shoes so quickly, and hiking shoes are expensive. I think so. Actually, I did bring reef shoes for Chloe, but I think she only wore them once. Yeah, in in the time that we were away, six months, she went up to two. I think it was two um, shoe sizes. So yeah, she was sprouting like a weed. Wouldn't you'd she? be you'd be buying more as you go. I got to know. Depends how active your child is. If they do a lot of walking, she got carried a lot of the way, so it wasn't really necessary. Donna asked, "Do you ever? Did you ever pull over on the side of the road for one night, or did you always travel to a designated camp spot?" Never just like straight on the side of the no. road, but lots of times we probably didn't make where we wanted to go, you know, but we'd know an hour before that and Tiff was scouting on wiki camps and sometimes yeah. it was just a gravel pit or yeah. a 72 hour stay. Nothing wrong with staying on the side of the road. It's just the road noise is yeah. annoying because there's a lot of road trucks going, road trains. road trains going through WA. So the, yeah, the truck noise is annoying and sometimes they can pull up at odd hours of the night and leave the engine running. And leave their engine running. For their aircon system, sometimes they just leave the motor going or a generator going. Yeah. So, yeah, if we could, we would stay somewhere close by, you know, a spot on wiki camps. Wasn't always a wasn't always a paid spot. It was often a free camp. Never concerned about security, but just noise, really. David asks what your most wait, wasteful purchase for camping was. The washing machine? <laughs> the washing machine was great while it worked. Yeah, it was. It's just a waste of money when it broke. Uh, was there anything we brought that we just did not use at all? What's some yeah, of that crap but, that I dropped off when we got but back? But it was little stuff. It was like a couch, for, like a little plush couch for Chloe. Oh, yeah. A little stable table. Yeah. What else? There was a, a clothes error. Yeah, little things. No, no big things, no big purchases or physically big things, really. No. But we've done a lot of camping before, so we knew what worked for us. Mm. So we basically, you know, we took everything that we would take on a weekend and that got us through. Why did you start YouTube and how did you build it to where it is today? Oh, um, probably initially I started, I think it was four or five years ago, maybe six years ago. And it was just because I was always camping or full driving or... 2016. 2016. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was always camping or full driving or, or, or something and I was putting a lot of pictures and little video clips on my, my private um, Facebook profile and I was just, I was annoying people because I had a lot of mates that probably weren't into it. So I, I just started a dedicated Facebook page just for, you know, putting those videos and pictures. And then it slowly just grew and I started putting some of the clips together on YouTube and they started to get views really, really, really slowly. And then... Yeah, it's taken years and years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, a, and a big inspiration for us were the mm. the Ex Expedition Australia, the, the Big yeah. Lap series that they did on DVD. Jen and... Steve Bale. Steve Bale. Yeah, if and you haven't seen that, it's so good. Two kids have got three little girls now. Well, they'll be growing up girls yeah. now. <laughs> but yeah, they're amazing DVD series. It's great. Yeah. It, and, and that's what sparked you wanting to film our trip. Yeah, I always wanted to do the trip anyway. But yeah, thinking about filming it like they did, uh, it was really exciting. Yeah. Joel asked, do you make money from YouTube and socials? <clears throat> yeah, not from social media. I, I think you can, but I don't because um, you have to pump a lot of ads and stuff into it. Uh, I'm talking about Facebook and Instagram. I don't make money through them. I make money through um, through YouTube. Uh, for the, those little skippable ads I put at the beginning of videos, I make a small amount of money uh, and also through affiliate marketing and merchandise and most recently Patreon. Yeah. So it's not a hell of a lot of money. It's not enough money for you to quit your job forever. Not a chance. <laughs> Weekend roaming asked, one place that you want to explore outside of WA? The rest of Australia. <laughs> yeah, there's not just one spot, there's lots. Um, for me, my big bucket list item is Uluru in Great Central. Mm. Mine will be um, the top end, Arnhem Land, 
and far north Queensland and some of the islands off Queensland. Bob asked, any camping spot you'd have liked to spend a couple of weeks at? I don't think so. <laughs> we, Probably we, not a couple of weeks. No, nah, we, we move quite quickly. Like, we get bored easily. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I'd really want to be set up somewhere for a couple of weeks. No, nah, five days is about my max somewhere, hey? Yeah, yeah. Especially when you're travelling on the road. Like, I don't think you've got... You don't really have... Unless you're living on the road, you don't really have the time to be set up somewhere for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Emily asked, how do we do washing on the road? Yes, yeah, so we started with that companion washing machine, which didn't... Um, which, didn't, as, you'll, yeah, as you'll see, broke. Several times. Several times. We had to fix it. So then we just went <clears> to a bucket... And we're just hand washing in the bucket, throw in some detergent, you know, wash it with your hands, yeah. rinse it out and hang it up. And that did the job. And we used that wool wash, which was, you could tip that stuff out on the floor. It's environmentally friendly, but it doesn't wash that well. So Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't actually rate that wool, wool, the wool wash at all. Um, next time I'll just use normal washing detergent. Yeah, but then you've it's, got to dispose of your grey water properly. Yeah. Because the chemicals in it. Okay, Matt Westralian asked your go-to spot in WA for a couple of nights away. He's got another YouTube channel um, and he's on social media as well. Have a look at him. Uh, in, the, oh, in all of WA? No, no, I think just your, your go-to spot. Oh, I can't give that away. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much within a couple of hours of Perth, so I have to keep that one close to myself. Lots of nice spots. I mean, Matt knows where they are anyway, but there's lots of nice spots near the, uh, near the dams. Sort of south uh, east of w of uh, Perth, uh, along the Murray River, along the Blackwood River, further south. Yeah. Our go-to spot used to be Sandy Cape yeah. in Durian Bay, but it's just so busy now. We haven't been there for years. Still beautiful, but yeah, it just yeah. gets smashed, doesn't it? Peter asked, any tips on travelling with kids? My number one tip is get an iPad. <laughs> the iPad yeah. was our saviour in the car, long drives. You know, when she was tired and grumpy, you could just set her up inside in the van with the iPad. Yeah, at her age, she can't sort of wind down and relax. She's just go, go, go all the time. So the, the iPad was just that sedative for her. Yeah, the <laughs> iPad and snacks. <laughs> yeah, feed them. Barely Off-Road asked, what tinny did you get? Well, you were going to buy his tinny. <laughs> yeah, I was going to buy Mark's tinny. Um, uh, yeah, I ended up getting a little Stesco 389 uh, Squire. I'll show you a little picture or a video of it there. And a 20 horsepower Honda. So I've got big plans for this thing. I'm starting to kit it out now. And it's gonna go on the roof of the canopy. And then we'll have to go out for a trip, Mark. So Anthony asked, if budget was not an issue, what caravan would you buy? And would it be Australian made? Yeah, so we didn't buy the MDC because we're on a really tight budget. We honestly bought that thing because it just had the best inclusions and it was just the best fit for our family at the time. Um, I, might, I might be wrong, but I don't think there's anything Australian made in 13 foot that has a shower and a toilet. And a king size bed. And a, and yeah, a permanent and a, bunk for and the a bunk. kid. I don't, I don't think there's anything out there. I might be wrong, but... And it was fully, yeah, fully composite frame, no wood in it. Um, and had a one ton payload. It just ticked every box. It, it wasn't because it was cheap that we bought it. It was, it was just the perfect fit for us. But I, I would rather support Australian if I could find something that ticked every box. Um, but there wasn't in that, in that model. Yeah. So Josh asked, why the MDC, not Fantasy, Easy Trail, etc. There's a few brands that have a very, similar. very similar layout. I just touched on that. It was, it was just because it, it was just... Uh, when I compared them all, it was, just, it was just better. It was slightly more expensive, but it, yeah, fully composite floor, one ton payload, um, bigger stub axles, bigger studs. Yeah. Um, so there are minor differences yeah. between the, the Chinese caravans and from what we came can, with the full annex from what we can see MDC have the best one at the time when we bought anyway Jason asked when the weather turned did you find 13 foot too small for three not yeah. not too small but definitely small yeah, it's small hmm. Grant asked are we upgrading the van and why yes we plan to hope to yeah and, because, and mainly because we want to do another lap. I don't think we want to do another lap with that caravan if we have two kids and a dog. Yeah, we It'd want separate toilet and shower. And we don't want like a fold out bunk for the second kid, like above the dining table, which most of these, which I could do for this one. Um, we want permanently set up bunks. So Shane asked, would you consider upgrading from a pop top? The pop top doesn't worry us. Mm. But I think we will get a full-size van. Yeah. 
Pop top, that, um, look, compromise either way. Pop tops yeah. are brilliant because there's less drag towing. Um, they're generally a, a little bit lighter. They've got way better airflow. Um, they cool down, heat up quicker. But I, the, then the higher roof is great because I think structurally that it, it makes sense that they're a little bit more structurally sound, uh, less flex and whatnot. Um, and also it'd just be cool to rock up and not have to set up anything at all. Like you could literally stay connected and just walk in the back. Yeah, and often we would we would pull over on the side of the road for lunch. And sometimes we, if the flies were bad, we would sit inside our van and not pop the roof, but we'd all be hunched over. So it'd be nice to walk into your van, make some lunch, have the fridge in there, the stove, cook your lunch and then yeah. sit and, and pull out again. And there's also not many can you, caravan manufacturers that do a a bigger van in a pop top mm. I think there's only one or two Kelly asked uh, would you buy another MDC if it catered to our needs definitely yes, I'd yes, probably rather do that I've got faith in the in the brand now 8 feet travels asked any ideas yet on your next van we've looked at a few brands but nothing in person mm. just with the borders being shut we haven't been able to look. Most of the ones that we like look of so far um, are over east. So once we can fly over, yeah. we'll have a look. And we've got the caravan and camping show coming up in Perth <laughs> in a few weeks, but none of those big van manufacturers are coming because the borders have been shut. Yeah. Um, but just offhand, the brands that we like to look at, uh, Titanium, Sunseeker. Basically, we want, we want composite, composite panels, no wood. Separate toilet and shower. Double bunks. Ideally, the bunks on the opposite end of the van from our bed. Yeah, internal kitchen. Between sort of 17 and 19 foot, or 16 and 19 foot. Um, don't care if it's single or double axle, and uh, ATM of less than three ton. Yeah. There is also a van manufacturer in Perth that we, he's quite a small guy that oh, yeah. we like to look at, so we might go check him out. He builds custom stuff, so we'll, we'll have a chat to him, I think. Dick has asked, as you've said, the big lap won't be for a few years yet. What's on the horizon in between local interstate boys weekends, etc.? All of that. Um, lots of things. I'll probably tick off a few things that I really want to do that Tish's not interested in, um, like the Simpson Desert, Dirk Hartog Island, a uh, couple of those sort of things. Um, and then there's sort of the bigger trips between all that, family trips. We're going up north a couple of times this year already. We've got booked in. Um, and then for the channel, uh, the D-Max Rebuild series will be big, um, a big thing. And then, yeah, boys trips. As a family, we don't really have anything interstate planned. It's just too hard to plan anything mm. at the moment. Who knows what's going to happen in the next few years. Yeah. And, yeah, certainly no international travel. We'd love to get to Canada, but I think that'll be years and years away now. Yeah. <laughs> Brad asked, why not sell up and live on the road full time? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't want to. I know Cam does. That's Cam's dream. But for me, I like having a home base. I like being at home. It's not for me. Mm. Shane asked, how's the, brewery, how's the brewing going? And what are you currently brewing? And what's in your kegerator at the moment? Oh, good question. <laughs> so brewing's going good. I'm doing a little bit of all grain and a little bit of extract. Um... If, any, if, if you don't know what that means, some of it I'm brewing from scratch, literally from grains I'm making beer, and some of it I use those cans of goop that you probably see in, in Woolies. Uh, what am I drinking at the moment? I got a cider, a nice apple cider. Um, uh, I got an IPA and a pale ale on tap, and then fermenting at the moment in the shed, I've got a Matika a Black Rock pale ale, so it's a New Zealand one, and a, oh, a ginger beer. I made a nice ginger beer with chilli and cinnamon and nutmeg and all that in it, so that'll be nice. But you're in a health kick at the moment, so <clears throat> no drinking. Yeah, I want, to, <laughs> I want to strip a little bit of weight, a bit of my holiday weight. We also have soda water on that, oh, on yeah. that tap, which we don't know how we lived without it. No, now. we smash that. We go through 20 litres of soda water like every three days. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best. <laughs> Magic Mechanic asked, any short tag along trips planned? Nothing um, locked in yet, but definitely on the agenda. I'm starting to sort of compile lists of places I'd like to do them and how I'd do it and a little bit of an itinerary. So it's going to happen. I'll start really small and just see, see if it takes off. Red and Grey Outdoors asked, if you had one shot or opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted, one moment, would you capture it or let it slip? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I was a big Eminem fan back in the day. Yeah. I used to watch it. What was his movie? Eight, Eight, Eight Mile? Mile. Yeah. I used to watch that. And I basically was Constantly. Eminem. I had, blo- I had blonde tips. <laughs> With your Wu-Tang pants. <laughs> Wu-Tang pants, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. We had a question about the first aid kit, so we'll run that through now. Just all your usual stuff that you have at home. Ibuprofen, Band-Aids. We had a thermometer for Chloe. Um, like big bandages in case of bites. Yep. Some burn stuff. Triangular bandage for broken arms and stuff. A recess shield. Uh, yeah, bandages. Some uh, rehydration sachets in case someone has diarrhea or something. Diarrhea. Yeah, antiseptic. Bum blockers. <laughs> Betadine. <laughs> Ventolin. Yeah. Um, antihistamines. Yeah. Yeah, basic stuff. Just all stuff. your usuals. I don't... Some quells for Tiff. She gets yeah. seasick. What we actually use, though, we didn't we didn't use anything bandage-wise. We used a couple of Band-Aids. Worming tablets for Tiff. <laughs> a wormer once a month. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't use them either. Um, what we did use, Band-Aids. I think we sometimes used a bit of Betadine. What else? We had a thermometer in here as well. It's yeah. always good for, have, for kids. You know, what we didn't do and I wanted to do, but I ran out of time which is a terrible excuse. I really wanted to do, I've got, I've got um, like CPR and first aid training and stuff. Tiff doesn't, I would have liked to have put her through it. Um, and also I would have, I don't have any snake bite um, training. I would have liked to have done a snake bite, spider bite first aid course or something. Cause things have changed. Mm. Like, I, and I don't even want to say on camera what I think you're supposed to do. Cause I'm probably I, wrong. I did actually, before we left, I printed out some like quick info sheets on what to do in case of a snake bite, uh, poisoning, broken arm, like just all your common things. Yeah. I printed them out and I laminated them and I put them in our itinerary folder so I could always grab them out if it was an emergency. But And the other, Health Direct, if you, if you do ever have an issue and you're, you're not quite sure if it's an emergency or not, just ring Health Direct because they can talk you through over the phone. They'll put you on to... Um, onto registered nurses and stuff and they can talk you through stuff provided you've got phone reception <laughs> sat phone yeah get a sat phone yeah and then we had a couple of questions about chloe just how how jason asked how chloe has settled back in does she talk about her adventures she settled right back in instantly she loves being home yeah in fact she actually doesn't want to go camping again no, she, she said she, well she keeps telling me she won't i keep wanting to take her away just in the swag for a night or two and she keeps telling me daddy i don't like camping anymore but she said she'll go traveling again if <laughs> mum comes and the caravan comes she'll come away she likes the idea of traveling as a family um but yeah she settled back in fine yeah started kindy absolutely loves it mm. she's been at school for four or five weeks now yeah and she loves it she's yeah she's going good she, come, she comes home really tired, but I think that's quite normal for kids starting school. But yeah, she loves her teacher. Her teacher said she's loving it, so she's a little social butterfly, so it's good for her. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you enjoy your big trip, travelling yeah. in the caravan? Yeah. Yeah? What was your favourite bit? Um, camping. Camping. And mm-hmm. there. And do you like? Did you like camping on the beach or in the bush the best, mm. or caravan parks? <laughs> mm, caravan parks. Caravan, caravan parks. parks. What was the best part about caravan parks? Mm, because we get to marshmallows. Because you get marshmallows. You had marshmallows everywhere. Every night. Didn't matter where we were. <laughs> yeah. So was that your favourite part? The marshmallows. Yeah. Yeah. What was the best animal that you saw? Kangaroos. You saw lots of kangaroos. Kangaroos. Yep. What about crocodiles? Mm, not bad, crocodiles. Yes, you did. You saw heaps. You, you saw held lots one. Of crocodiles. You held a crocodile in your hands. And you rode a camel? No. <laughs> I honestly don't think she remembers <laughs> most of it. I don't think she remembers. Already. <laughs> yeah. But luckily, Dad's taken heaps of video and I can show you later. Yeah. We're also going to get um, a book, like a photo book done for her. Yeah. So she can look at that. We've done that with past trips. And when, you know, when we're reading a book at night time before bed, she'll choose that and flick through and look at old holidays. So. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to go traveling again? Mm, yeah. 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 You want to go camping? Mm, no. Oh, but you go traveling. <laughs> the only travel. I don't like camping. Oh, why not? <laughs> because it's boring. 
Oh. It's boring. Fair enough. Rightio. Say bye, everyone. Subscribe uh, for more videos. Bye, everybody. Subscribe for more videos. Oh, good job. <laughs> Alrighty, so I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, we answered most of the questions. If we did miss your question, go back and have a look on social media where you asked it. I might have answered it there. Otherwise, there's a good chance I answered it in the last, um, well, we answered it in the last Q&A video. Thanks so much for asking the questions. Uh, we really enjoy being interactive with you guys. And uh, we'll do another one in a few months' time when things have changed. And Will we? Oh, yeah, <laughs> eventually. We've got no plans to, but <clears throat> if anything changes and people have questions, we will. Say bye, everyone. <laughs> See you guys. Cheers.